Welcome to our lesson on circular motion part 4. This is the fourth lesson in the series of the uniform circular motion. Basics. What have I covered so far? I have covered okay iridian is the angle subtended at the center when the length on the circumference, the distance on the circumference S is equal to the radius of that particular circle. Then we saw also what is angular displacement. Okay. Angular velocity, sorry, angular velocity is the rate of change of angular displacement. After this, we saw how we got omega is equal to V over R and finally 2 pi F, where F is number of revolution per second. So the trick will always be converting revolution per minute or revolution per hour into revolution per second. That is F. Then number three, velocity is equal to r omega. And we also derived centripetal acceleration using vectors. Okay? And we got v squared over r. And when you substitute v here, it gives you that. So that is what we did, and that is the basis of your calculation. Now, what I want to advise you, that you must understand all those four formula. Formula number one up to formula number four are very important. And now I'm going to add another formula today, which is centripetal force. Okay? So, we can focus a bit down here. Centripetal force is a net force towards the center. So it is a net force towards the center. Centripetal acceleration is also directed towards the center. Okay? So this is a force that keeps bodies in a circular path and it is directed towards the center. In linear motion, you can easily understand net. Okay? That means there are other forces in action, but when we consider those other forces in action, what remains is what causes motion. That's why we have MA. A is depicts motion. M depicts a body. A body you talk about has mass. And A is acceleration, which is the rate of change of velocity. So velocity is changing. Acceleration gives you the idea of motion. M gives you the idea of a body which executes that motion. So, from force is equal to MA, we just put our A here. Remember, A is V squared over R. So, we remove A, replace it with V squared over R. Replace again A with R omega squared. So this is basically what we are talking about in this lesson. If you have your basics right, it is very easy now to get this because I don't, I'm not going to derive it. We are going to apply it. So we go again focus down. I want us to focus down a bit. I, I talk of these few things here. Focus. Yeah, that is on focus now. So, centripetal force may take any of these forms. We know centripetal force by formula is this. So, it may take any of these forms. What do I mean? Like, if you have, remember, when I, I was whirling a body around a circle, this is the situation we talked about here. You have a string. Okay? We have a string. 
and you are moving this you are whirling it you are rotating this body in a vertical circle you see if you have a bigger mass you feel like you are being pulled here so that's why the force now tension in the string provides that what we call centripetal force because this tension will be purely towards the center and in the tension there are two aspects when we have a horizontal circle and a vertical circle so i've shown you a vertical circle a horizontal circle would be something like this okay see that that would be a horizontal circle uh, now the two we shall handle in a given lesson but for today our aim is to know that centripetal force and the situation where we can get a force that provides it so centripetal force can take these forms tension in the string which we shall do we are now just mentioning so tension in the string of a horizontal circle and of a vertical circle friction between the tire and the road okay friction between the tire and the road now the road we shall handle also two i've only mentioned one here so friction between the tire and the road we have essentially we are talking about i can talk about a and then b okay so that is an banked road okay an banked road so reaction of the banked road and we can say just going around a flat road and banked and banked road so in tension you must know the two tension in the string when the circle is vertical and when the circle is horizontal two we are going to talk about friction in a two aspect between the tire and the road when it is banked road and when it is not banked when it is banked there is an inclination when it is not banked is a flat road okay so let us look at let's say an banked road before i finish my lesson let us look at an banked road an banked road eh? an banked road when you are driving round an banked road a corner when you are negotiating a corner and that road is not banked the friction force provides centripetal force so what are we talking about friction force provides centripetal force okay so we are here when you are going around a corner and that road is not banked it is the friction between the tire and the road will make you go round that corner safely and we have seen that friction uh, centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r or it can be m r omega squared so if i ask you about friction so far if i ask you about friction force it is as good as asking you what provides centripetal force 
when a vehicle goes round an banked road you have to know the mass of the car the velocity and the radius of that car okay that is what i mean an banked road it is friction between the tire and the road which will make you go safely round the the curve the corner the force that is experienced the force that is directed towards the center is known as centripetal force the force that is to directed towards the center is known as centripetal force centripetal force is provided for by friction so that's why i've written fr is equal to fc is equal to mv squared over r now if there is no enough friction then you skid just like if you pour soapy water on the floor you skid so if there is no enough friction skidding takes place so number two i bullet two no friction it implies skidding okay if there is no enough friction there will be skidding so we can focus up again so that you get it friction provide centripetal force friction provide centripetal force therefore i can say friction is equal to fc which is equal to that if friction is not enough skidding is likely to take place okay so skidding can take place if there is no enough friction to provide for centripetal force but skidding may also happen if your tires are worn out okay so we are saying uh, condition of the tire may cause skidding okay so your tires must be good to prevent skidding if your tires are good there will be enough friction if there is enough friction there will be enough centripetal force to make sure that your car safely drives round the corner okay what else do we need to know speed when you are driving round the corner most of the time you see the the the, the motorist reduce speed why because there is a speed which is safe for you to negotiate the corner okay beyond that safe speed skidding takes place these are practical examples okay so there is what we call critical speed what i mean here is you can drive at 40 kilometers per hour you can negotiate a corner you can drive at maybe 50 kilometers per hour you negotiate a corner but there are some corners if you come at 80 kilometers per hour you will ski so what do i mean there is a limit in the speed above which skidding takes place there is a speed above which 
skidding will take place. So that limiting speed, that maximum speed you can drive safely is what we call critical speed. Okay? So if you go beyond that speed, then you will skid. And that is one of the causes of road accidents with young people. They did physics, they don't apply physics. So you are doing physics now, that as you drive, even if you are moving at a high speed, when you reach a bend, you have to slow down. Why? Because remember, there is what we call critical speed. So you go above that, skidding will take place. So you see, that is an aspect that is simple because it is in life situation. So in conclusion, centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r, which is also mr omega squared. A centripetal force take different forms. Tension in the string can provide centripetal force. And I've just said friction can provide centripetal force. And especially I've handled where you are moving round a circular path which is not banked. But we shall see now individual cases in the subsequent lessons. Please, you must understand lesson one, then come to two, two to three, three to four. You build yourself. Subscribe more so that you get what is next. In this one, there isn't much work because I was just to give you a key point that centripetal force is a resultant force. A resultant force is when there are many forces and then you resolve them. You consider them and then come up with what sustains motion. Till then, bye-bye.